Okay, now it's time to do some uh, sexual education on N42 and N46 engines. Now we're ready to put back the Vanos units. So first I have to remove the old Vanos bolt and make sure that you put the Vanos units in correct position. So this is ein or in. That means this is the intake side. Make sure that the Vanos unit fits all the way in. Okay, we do the same with the exhaust, so OUS or X. Make sure that the chain is all the way on the Venus units. And now we can put in fresh new Venus bolts. I'm going to use a socket and I'm going to tighten them down by hand. And now I'm going to release them just a little bit so the chain can rotate freely. And the impulse sending gears can also rotate without any issues. Okay, we're now ready to do the timing. Now we have to use our locking tools and lock the back of the camshafts. First insert the intake locking tool. Also insert the exhaust camshaft locking tool. At this point the camshaft might be uh, rotated out of alignment, so you will have to try and rotate the camshaft slowly. Then we have to secure the camshaft locking tools with bolts. And then we also put in this middle bolt here. This will secure the intake camshaft locking tool. Next we use this front locking tool to orientate the impulse sending gear on the Vanos units. So we have two holes and we have two pins here and we have to match them together. And we also have to make sure that this front locking tool is flush with the cylinder head. And then we secure the tool with the bolts that are provided in the timing kit. Next we have to insert this locking pin that locks the crankshaft in top dead center on the first cylinder. So as you can see this pin can go through a hole in the engine block and it engages the hole in the flywheel and this hole is located underneath the starter motor and the best way to get to this hole is to raise this side of the car. So this is the left hand side and you can reach that hole from underneath. It is a bit tricky, but I am going to try and show you how to do this. Luckily, I have my car on the car lift, so I'm just going to raise it up. If you don't have a car lift, you can just raise this side of the car up and you should have enough space to reach the hole for the locking pin. The car is now up and I've already removed a couple of parts. So first thing you have to remove is this splash plate 
this is just a plastic piece that is attached with a couple of Phillips uh, screws all around so there are two on this side and two on the other side and also three at the back you just unscrew them and at the front you have to remove three plastic fasteners so you have to do this because you have to insert the handle to the crankshaft so we have 22 millimeter socket there and it is connected to this expansion so this way I can rotate the crankshaft in the right orientation. I've also removed this aluminum reinforcement plate. This is just so I can show you easier where the pin goes and how to insert it. You don't have to remove this reinforcement plate. As you can see, here is our control arm on the left hand side. And here is our oil sump. And here is our subframe. And here you can see there's a gap where you can get to the engine block. Okay, now it's time to do some uh, sexual education on N42 and N46 engines. You will see why that is later when we are finished inserting this pin. So uh, let's start. First, what you need to do is uh, of course fill the hole with your finger and try and clean out all the dirt and also make sure that everything is nicely lubricated to insert the pin easier and uh, my suggestion is you first try and just insert the tip and uh, when you find the start of the hole you can then align the tool or the pin so you can insert it all the way in so First, we are just going to try and insert the pin through the housing of the engine. And of course, as I said, first I'm going to try and fill the hole with the tip of the tool. I am at an angle right now. But once I feel that the tip is in the hole, I can put the tool back into straight position and I can guide it through this gap here. So if I press in, I should now feel the pin being inserted in the hole. And in the beginning, there will probably be some dirt. So you will have to wiggle it a lot and also use more lubrication. But once you get it started, it should be quite easy to get it in and out. And then it will probably stop because you will hit the flywheel so this is about here uh, halfway in and once you have this pin halfway in and you start feeling resistance you have to start using your other hand and rotate the crankshaft until you can feel that uh, the hole in the flywheel is engaging with the pin so this is also uh, quite tricky to do you have to position the crankshaft just the right way so that you can insert the pin all the way in. And uh, my flywheel is already aligned all the way in so I can insert the pin fully. And as you can see, the pin when fully inserted is kind of close to the edge of the housing of the engine. So this is now all the way in and that's because I've previously uh, inserted the pin and everything is aligned. So this is why this is so easy. But if you are doing this for the first time, you will probably need about 15 minutes of foreplay to get uh, everything right. But once it's in, it should be quite easy. Now, uh, there are of course two holes there in the flywheel if you have automatic transmission on the automatic transmission you have a small hole and a big hole and of course you have to put the pin in the small hole not the big hole and once you insert the pin in the right hole you should not be able to rotate the crankshaft so be careful always put it in the right hole and of course, I hope that this video doesn't get demonetized due to so much uh, sexual innuendo in this uh, freaking pin. 
So, okay, now we have the pin inserted. Now we can go back on top and start uh, doing the timing. Now I'm going to screw in this pre-tensioning tool. This one uh, comes in the timing tool kit and there's a central bolt that you have to pre-tension. And uh, as you can see, I did shorten this bolt just a little bit, I think about one centimeter. So I have a little bit uh, more room here. I'm going to unscrew it a little bit and uh, screw the whole pre-tensioning tool in the engine. The tool is in, now I have to screw in this central bolt. First I'm only going to do it hand tight. Now I'm going to use this little 3D printed torque wrench that I've made. So uh, we have to pretension the central bolt to 0.6 newton meters and because it's very uncommon to have such a small uh, torque wrench I've uh, designed and calibrated this uh, little 3D printed tool so we have a rotor here and the case and uh, it all fits together and when you want to tighten down to 0.6 newton meters you can just uh, rotate this casing here until the rotor starts skipping on the teeth and this is uh, according to BMW spec for timing this engine. I will put some links down in description so uh, you will be able to get this tool yourself. So first I have to put this tool on the central bolt and then I'm just going to rotate it until it starts clicking like a normal torque wrench. Okay, so uh, the tool started clicking so I think this is the right amount of pretension. Okay, and uh, we're done with this. Now we have to tighten down the Venos bolts to 20 newton meters. So I am using 16 millimeter socket here. So first we do exhaust side. And then we do the intake side. Now we have to rotate the screws for 90 degrees twice, first on exhaust and then intake. So I'm going to mark the bolts so I know where the right position is for this rotation angle. So I'm going to first make a mark here and in the middle. And I'm going to make a mark here at the bottom. So first what we need to do is rotate the bolt so this mark is aligned with this mark on the impulse sending gear and then we have to do another one until we get this mark here matched with this mark here on the impulse sending gear. Okay, so this is an easy way on how to do this without your angle gauge. If you have a good angle gauge, you can also use that. Now I'm going to use this long bar and a 16 millimeter socket to rotate the screws first on the exhaust side for 90 degrees. We are almost at our mark, so this is okay. Now let's do the exhaust side. We 
we are also right there. So now let's do the second 90 degrees. Yes, this is it. We have our marks here, so this is okay. And also here we have our 90 degrees, so altogether 180. Now we have to remove our pretensioning tool. And now we put back the chain tensioner. When you are doing this, make sure that it is the latest revision. You should see the part number here stamped on the base of the tensioner. Make sure that uh, you replace the chain tensioner if it is still original or uh, if uh, you are not sure if it is the latest revision. This is very important because the latest revisions have a different design which is a bit more uh, reliable so the chain doesn't jump. Now we have to tighten down the chain tensioner to 65 Newton meters. I'm using my 27 millimeter socket and of course the torque wrench is set to 65 Newton meters. You can access the chain tensioner from the front area. It is a bit tricky but it can be done. And I'm going to go just one click at a time. Make sure that the socket is uh, perfectly aligned with the hex shape on the tensioner, otherwise it might slip. Okay, so this should be it. Now we can remove all the locking tools. Remove your old underwear. Hmm. Maybe. Nah, not really. And we also have to remove the locking pin from the flywheel. Okay, I've removed the locking pin from the flywheel. So it is still in the engine block, but it is not engaging the flywheel. That means that I can rotate the crankshaft. And now we're going to do two rotations at the crankshaft and then we have to get back into original top dead center position and then we're going to check the back of the camshafts with the locking tools if they are timed correctly. So I'm using 22 millimeter socket and a ratchet and now I can rotate the crankshaft Okay, we're back at the top dead center after two rotations. Now I'm going to lift the car up again and reinsert the locking pin. Intake locking tool is in and as you can see it uh, has no slack here, so no gap. The maximum allowed gap here is 0.5 millimeter, but uh, that's kind of hard to determine because there is some play here but I think that this will definitely be good enough. So this is the intake side. Let's take out this tool. Now let's check the exhaust side. And it looks like there is no gap here on this side. So this should be okay. And this is uh, the end of this timing procedure. Before you remove the locking pin from the flywheel, make sure you tighten up the bolts on the pulley. 
So we have three bolts here that we had to remove to get to this uh, journal bolt here. So now we have to tighten them down and they have to be tightened down to 34 Newton meters. So here is my torque wrench. And now we can finally remove that locking pin.